Little Woman, Chapter Three, Thinking of Others. On Christmas morning, on Christmas morning, the March sister awoke uh, awoke early because they wanted to surprise Mother with their gift. Joe reached under the bed and pulled out a wooden box where the gift for gifts for Mother were hidden. I hope Mother likes this," said Joe. She held up a wrap. Parcel close to her heart. Joe had penned a poem just for her mother. Beth fingered her f- her gift to mother. Two handkerchiefs with Daisy. With Daisy, she had spent all night making them. Although some of the Daisy looked like uneven yellow spots, Beth hoped mother would love them. Smell how lovely that is. Amy pressed a small box under Meg's nose. Did you get lavender? It's Mom's favorite," Meg said knowingly. Amy had used her savings to buy a bottle of cologne for Mother. Of course, it's, na- it's lavender, though my personal preference is roses," said Amy. Meg, where are you? where is your gift? Joe lifted the wooden box and shook it hard. Oh, I have it here," said Meg. From her pocket, from from her pocket, she pulled out a bundle. Wrapped in a silk handkerchief, inside was a pair of white silk gloves. Joe squeezed Meg's hand. She knew that Meg had saved her hard earning on money to purchase those special gloves. They will fit Mother's hands perfectly, Meg said as she lovingly placed them inside the box. The girls crept quietly downstairs to the living room. Mother usually reclined in her chair, sipping her coffee before the girls scurried. Scurried, scurried in, in for the be- for the breakfast. So, in order to surprise her, the girls tiptoed across the hall and stood quietly outside the living room entrance. Amy had a fit of giggles. Shh, Joe, his tattle. Girls, on the count of three, Meg whispered. One, two, three. The girls flew into the room and shouted simultaneously, "Surprise, Mother Mary!" But before they could finish their greetings, the girls noticed Mother's chair was was unoccupied. Instead, Hannah had thrown in a tray, of in a tray full of cakes. Ah, uh, Hannah! Ah, uh, Hannah screamed as she almost flipped the tray over. Meg ran over to help their beloved housekeeper. Oh, girls! Amy clasped her hands, her eyes growing big as she looked at the dining room ta- table. The table was covered with heaps of food. There were sausages, eggs, fresh juice and butter, and cakes adorned, adorned each corner. Your ma wanted to surprise you, you girls, with the Christmas feast," said Hannah, still clutching her chest and breathing deeply. The girls were so touched by their mom's loving act. But where is she? asked Joe. Before Hannah could answer, Mother walked in through the front door. Good morning, my darling girls. Mother opened her arms wide to embrace her daughters. Where did you go, Mother? Meg asked. I went to see the Hummels, replied Mother. The Hummels were a very poor family with many small children. Mister Hummel had been drafted into the army, leaving his pregnant wife and six small children to fend for themselves. For themselves, since Mother worked as a volunteer to help unfortunate people in the community. She knew that the homo situation was very well. How are the children? asked Beth gently. Not very good, I'm afraid. Mother answered gravely. They have no heating of or food. Her voice trailed off as she looked at the feast on the table. The girls knew what Mother was thinking, but except for Beth, the other girls were reluctant to part with their Christmas meal. Meg reasoned to herself, "We don't get any gift." We should at least get a decent Christmas meal. Joe was thinking, "I'm starving, and those sausages looks appetizing." Amy co- contemplated, "Maybe we can eat first, then give the rest away to the Hummels." Mother smiled at them as if she could discern their very thoughts, but she said kindly, "I just want to say that that this meal is a gift from me and Hannah to you. However, you want to use your gift." It's entirely up to you. I will love and respect you, whatever you decide. Meg spoke first. Mother, the girls and I would be honored if the Hummels could enjoy this lovely meal. Joe and Beth nodded in agreement. A moment or two later, 
a, mo a moment or two later, Amy nodded too. My girls, I'm so proud of you, Mother said. Let's go. Let's all go together to visit the Hummels, suggested Beth. So the girls sprinted downstairs to change their clothes, but within a few minutes, the food was all wrapped up and ready to go. The girls got into their boots and coats and ventured out. Each of them carried large baskets filled with food. As the Hummels did not have any heating, Joe hauled a sack of of wood as well. None of the girls felt regret, regret or resentment. Deep in their hearts, they knew the Hummers would relish the meal much more than they would. As they passed the old mansion next to the door, Joe happened to look up. From the third floor, a dark-haired boy peered down as, at them as they struggled along. Look, there's old Mr. Lawrence's grandson, Joe called out to her sister. Joe, reprimanded Meg, stop staring at him. It isn't proper for a young girl to stare at the boy. Don't be such a granny, Meg, snorted Joe. Since both her hands were full, she lifted up her foot, her foot and wiggled it at him as an alternative way, of, an alternative way to waving. Joe, you're so shameless, said Amy in a rebuke. From the window, the boy also lifted his foot and wiggled it at Joe. Joe let out a loud, hearty laugh. No one will describe how grateful the Hummers, the Hummer family was for the generous gift. Joe expertly, expertly got the fire going in no time, while Meg and Amy set up the table and lifted it with food. Beth and Mother took care of the sick children. Did you see how happy those children were? Amy said as a girl walked back home, her footsteps light and box. Mrs. Hummel could not stop crying, remarked Joe. I felt so sorry for her. Hopefully, Mr. Hummel will be, will be able to return home soon, said Mother. Silently, all the girls prayed for their father to do the same. As the girls got nearer to the house, something made them stop. What is that in our house? In our house? asked Amy. Well, I think so. But it looks different somehow. No, is that our house? asked Amy. Well, I think so, but it looks different somehow, replied Meg. There was a warm glow to the house, as if each room was emitting heat. What if if this house was it? What if the house was is on fire? Joe shouted. She tore across the field, her hair flying out of its bun, and threw open the door. What a sight to behold! The thousand. The entire house was cosily warm, a fire burning brightly in each fireplace. The bare dining room table was once again crowded with all sorts of delights. Hannah, what is this? Mother demanded to know, choking, choking back tears. Hannah could pr pr produce no reply, but simply pointed to the match next door. You mean Mr. Lawrence sent this? asked Mother. Hannah nodded, overcome by a fresh wave of tears. Here's a card. Here's a card, Joe waved, a, Joe waved a small piece of paper in the air. Dear Mrs. Smart and all her lovely daughters, Joe read, Joe read, my grandson and I would like to give a gift to you as you so generously gave to others, your neighbor, Mr. Lawrence. The, the girls all wrapped hands and started to dance around the table. Never had they been so surprised. You see, girls, mother has said happily, when you think of other, others, others think of you.